that is still about the same. About 26 million people work for corporations and companies. This country is a corporation. It is owned by a German queen who sits in that council house in Buckingham Palace. This country is owned by the Church of England. This country is owned and dominated by rich Jews and rich Arabs. They're not stupid. They know that you will acquiesce into anything that you will support one against the other, even though there is no evidence in any country in the world of a common humanity, of a brotherhood of humanity, of a world where love, peace, justice and equality exists amongst human beings. You see that in the news every single day. The only good thing, or one of the good things about Western society is its honesty and openness about its rulers and leaders in business and media as to how much lies and how much corruption that they partake in. So is it any wonder that the people of this country are disillusioned with the way things are? How little faith there is in man because man is so easily bought off, so easily seduced into agreeing into something and doing it. Why is it that, for instance, in today's world, there are, for instance, eight million pounds spent every year in the United States of America on cosmetics, and the United Nations, another dysfunctional, failed organization, which is essentially just for the, 40, the 44 or so nations represented at Bretton Woods, why is it that, according to the United Nations, something in the region of $9 million a year, the equivalent of what the American people spend on cosmetics, could be used to provide clean water for the poor peoples of South America, Africa, Asia, the Middle East and Russia? Millions of human beings in this world do not have access to water on every regular day basis. And the Muslim world, the Christian world, and the Jewish world is a total failure, a complete, utter, hypocritical failure in this care for the poor, which the church and the Muslims, and giving money away, when they never address the reason and the basis of this is the capitalist world. There are, of course, a history of philanthropy. J.D. Rockefeller gave away what is equivalent in 19th century money to today's money of £300 million of his personal wealth to help the poor in the middle of the 19th century. He founded Standard Oil, which is one of the main oil companies that helped supply the German Nazis with oil and fuel during the Second World War. There was William Cadbury, Joseph Roundtree and other philanthropists a multi-million rich people who lived in 19th century Europe and 19th century America who were giving away millions. At the same time, it wasn't even until 1862 or thereabouts that child labour was outlawed in this country. A young child as young as 9 or 10 was legally allowed to work in a factory, to work in a mine or to work in a shipyard in Victorian England. The Victorian values that Margaret Thatcher so successfully implemented during the greed and selfishness that is now mainstream. That has now been achieved. Everybody's greedy, everybody's selfish. Fuck you, I'm all right. That was the consequence of 15 years of Margaret Thatcher and the Conservative Party. Fuck you, I'm all right. Tony Blair, the capitalist Catholic who ordered the bombing and killing of a million people on the pretext of weapons of mass destruction, none of which was there any evidence. The conceit and arrogance of that man knows no limit. But the people voted New Labour after 2003, irrespective of the hundreds of thousands of Iraqi Arabs who were bombed into oblivion and killed by uh, the NATO, which stands for not another terrorist organisation. The people who run this country depend on conflict. They depend on the ethnic cleansing of people in Nigeria by Muslim nutcases. They depend on Jewish settlers removing Palestinians from their homes and renaming towns and villages in Hebrew. The State of Israel allows and supports the killing of Palestinians 
and has done since 750,000 Palestinians were removed from their homes in 1947. There is no limit, there is no extent to which humanity will acquiesce and agree, whether it is themselves, their own people or other people. I put it to you that the people are the mob, the people are ignorant, they will wave stupid little flags and declare that they are different to another human being. And they will fight, kill and die for the people who rule over them, who exploit them. Even Dr. Joseph Goebbels was a Marxist in his youth in 1920s Germany. He called upon the workers of Germany and the workers of Russia to unite. And yet they ended up slaughtering one another to the tune of 20 or 30 million alone in Operation Barbarossa. The working class collectively are stupid. They're like a herd of morons who think more of Man United versus Chelsea or the price of a pint of beer or the 3.30 of Kempton because that's how easily you are bought off. You are a disgrace to the working class of this country who suffered in the most grotesque, dirty, inhospitable cities of industrial England in the 19th century where people died before they were 40 years of age of pneumoconiosis and dysentery and other such diseases. The Health and Safety at Work Act didn't even come into place until 1974. Before that, every employer in this country could treat their people as they like. And now we see the logical consequence of a market-driven economy where Tesco employs children for nothing on Oxford Street, where workers now have to work without a contract, where they are phoned up on a daily basis do you want to come into work or not? The logical extent of a neo-capitalist society in which every human being justifies the exploitation of every other human being on the erroneous nonsense of the trickle-down effect, which is the insult of insults that the capitalists offer to the poor, not just of this country, but of the world, that you will get a tiny trickle of the billions and billions that George Soros has made over the last 40 odd years. That's all you're entitled to, a trickle. So I put it to you, the world of mammon has triumphed and has never actually disappeared. But these religions, these Muslims, Jews and Christians are about as effective as a fart in a hurricane. <laughs> Literally. And their intelligence level is about that of an amoeba. It is, uh, it is staggering to know how people are so easily acquiesced into the notion that somehow you can spread wealth. The Labour Party abandoned the concept of redistribution way back in 1998 when they decided that it is about creation wealth. Even the Liberal Democrats put a leaflet through the door. They don't mention the disabled or the unemployed. They or we have been forgotten. We are ignored by you. You work slaves for the capitalists. You only have this day off in the week because our ancestors fought against the church well, and worry. fought against the, the aristocracy and died against the industrial classes so that you'd have Saturday and Sunday off. That's the only reason there is a five-day week. Well, that's virtually God, as now you spend your lives working and you know in your heart of hearts you get virtually nothing in return for your labour. You know you are exploited. You know your trade unions bank in the city of London and invest their money in corporate state that is the city of London. You know that the bankers earn billions of dollars and give each other millions of pay increases. When they say that everybody is under the law, they are lying. Every banker in the world is above the law. And I feel no compassion when I see a or hear of a banker committing suicide. I feel no compassion for these greedy, rapacious, gluttonous pig dogs that they are. Because that is what they are. Schweinhund. Yeah. They are. What about their families? What about their families? Do you not feel compassion for their families? Where is this narrative coming? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, where, where do you feel compassion for somebody? Let's take George Soros, one of the more interesting 
bankers of the modern world. George Soros was born to a Jewish father who was a lawyer in communist Hungary. At the age of 17, he came to this country via Switzerland. He worked in kitchens, and like all capitalists, he was out to get what he can from other people. That is what you're encouraged to do by the ethos of private education or the state education. You are told in so many words that your only raison d'etre is to take advantage of a fellow human being. And capitalism and the making of money has always been that. Nothing more, nothing less. And George Soros studied at the London School of Economics and he was influenced in part by Karl Popper, a man who actually advocated the idea of an open society where there was debate and argument. But let, let's, let's, let's dwell on that because there was, of course, no open debate and argument in the communist bloc systems, just as there is no real open and debate argument in capitalist Britain. You don't hear any argument that is away from the making of money. You don't hear it when you listen to an American broadcast on the economy. I don't know what the FTSE share index is of Nikkei in relation to Nasdaq. Quite frankly, I don't give a toss. But I do know that it determines my life. I do know that most women are more likely to go out with a man who lives in Sloan Square than lives in Hackney. Because most women are but prostitutes. But why are you lots of women around here? <laughs> because, because obviously people want, people want all the fitters in life. George Soros studied economics at the LSC and he set up his own quantum fund. In 1969, that quantum fund was worth £300 million. By 1997, it was worth £600 billion. And he did it on the arbitrage scale of the market in which he creamed off profits from security and sales divisions and hedge funds and bet on the securities of other countries economies he of course is the art speculator and, and art invest the art capitalist he admitted in his autobiography that by the late 1970s he was having a personality change his first marriage was going down the tube and he admitted that he spent little or no time with his wife and his three children. Well, obviously, if you're going to make £600 million pounds or £300 million pounds into £600 billion, pounds, you ain't going to do it being with your family. The average British citizen today, the average man, spends five minutes with his children every day. That's what I call conservative family values. That's what I call the hypocrisy of the representatives of the ruling class of this country who have always convinced the dumbass working class to vote conservative and who have always supported the richest earners in this country because in a democracy you are nothing unless you earn money. You are nothing unless you drive a big car and you live in a big house. That is how it is agreed and has been since Oliver Cromwell's time. So what did George Soros do in the 1980s and the 1990s? He set himself up as a philanthropist. He started putting millions of pounds into the liberation of Hungary. He actually supplied the Hungarian government and the Hungarian people with photocopiers. And he set up a quantum fund which is based in New York that called for the removal of the socialist communist dictatorship of Hungary. And he supplied millions of pounds and planned a 17...